Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another blue chip sim tutorial this time. Uh, so as you can see, we've got, if well, if you don't recognize it, maybe you're in the right place. Uh, we've got PFPX open. Uh, PFPX stands for Professional Flight Planner X, and it is by far my favorite and the best flight planning uh, software for simulations out there. Uh, so we're just going to do a really quick video today. We're going to do a quick tutorial on uh, the basics of how to plan a flight in PFPX. Uh, it's honestly I, when I first got PFPX, I was lost, had no idea what was going on, um, and I found some instructions on how to do it, and I was like, "Wow, this is really easy." Just wasn't that intuitive to begin with, so. Uh, if you've watched my other video, which if you haven't, I'm going to put a link to it down at the bottom, my most, my other most recent video. Uh, it is me introducing uh, World Tour Wednesday to you guys. Uh, you'll know that my first flight on World Tour Wednesday is uh, Dallas-Fort Worth to Orlando International Airport. So that is the flight that we are going to plan today. Uh, as you can see, I have it pulled up here on FlightAware. Uh, this is a flight that we're going to model in that video. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of that throughout World Tour Wednesday, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to learn how to use PFPX in the most simplest way possible. Uh, so what we've got here is American Airlines 1212. Uh, that's going to be our flight number. Uh, looks like it arrived three hours and 35 minutes ago. Uh, but it goes from Dallas-Fort Worth to... MCO, Orlando, Florida. Um, so, and here's all the information that we need. Uh, so we're, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna come in here. First, we're going to add a new aircraft. Now the easiest way to do this is to go to aircraft database. We're gonna go new, click on the little, um, little down arrow here. We're gonna do new from template. You can see all the aircrafts that I have in there, but we're going to ignore those, pretend like I don't have any. A new aircraft from template. And then if you'll notice over here, the plane that they used was a 737-800. So we are going to be uh, flying the exact same plane. And if you scroll through, you will find PMDG Boeing 737-800-NGX. So we're going to create from that template. So if you want to make a flight, you gotta have an aircraft set up. Now, if you saw there were a lot of templates there and the templates are really all you need. Unless you're using a more obscure aircraft, the templates are gonna do everything for you. Um, so, we don't have a uh, registration. So I think we're just going to uh, pull one that, let's just go find one. Um, we are going to go find the registration of the plane that uh, flew that route today. Um, where are we going to find it? Nope, not here. Uh, I know plane finder. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, plane finder should tell me. Nope, not plane finder. Flight radar? Here we go. All right, so today that I'm recording this is the 23rd of May. Looks like N960AN is the registration of the plane that flew. So we're going to use that registration. Um, so we're at N960AN. I'll put the same thing in for the tail number. Registration is required. Tail number is not to fill this out. Um, it already gives me, since we used a template, it already gives me everything that I need. Um, th the only things that you really should change are weights, lengths, altitudes, stuff like that. Um, really the only thing I'm going to change here is pounds. Um, because I'm flying American and I set it up in the American way. Um, <clears throat> and I use pounds. So I'm going to switch that to pounds, leave lengths as meters, and altitudes as feet. Um, that's the way we're going to do it. And I leave usually all this speed schedule stuff the same. 
and then I go in and I save the aircraft and we just created a new aircraft. So now that we've created an aircraft, we're going to add, click add flight here. So what we're doing is AA1212 from, and we type in our uh, origin airport, KDFW, tab over, and type in our destination of KMCO. Finds all that for us. Um, and then you can put in your times or whatever you want here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in. Actually, I'm just going to leave them the way they are because what you're putting in is Zulu time and what you're, and then it shows local time above it. I'm not going to mess with it right now um, because I don't want to do the calculations for the Zulu time. Uh, but then what we do is we go down here to aircraft and we scroll down and we find that registration that we made. N960AN and then we click save. Now the next prompt up here says plan flight and we have the flight that we made selected right here. So we're going to click plan flight. So what you want to do is you want any you want to make all these green. Right? All these little dots green. So first let's go to payload. There's different ways to do it. You can type in your payload and it'll have different presets per what you put in. So if you want 160 adults and then five children, five infants. But what I do is I come up here, right up here, and I click random. Random makes it easy. And sometimes I just, depending on how full I want to be, I just keep clicking until I get a cool zero fuel weight. And look, hey look, let's do this one. It's really light, right? Fuel, the only thing that you might want to do with this is put in extra fuel. So you can either do it by pounds or you can put it in by time. So I'm going to add 60 minutes of extra fuel. So we've done fuel, we've done payload. Costs, I don't do anything with that. Route, what I do is I come up here. Um, actually, let's do something different. So if you come over here, let's come back to uh, Flight Aware. If you look at this route right here. This is the route that the actual plane flew, or at least the one that was filed, all right? So if we go copy this, and then we come back here and paste, most of the time, if you put it in and then come up here and click Build Route, it'll actually generate that exact same route. So if you look here, it'll generate that route, and that's the same route except for maybe a diversion around a storm up here that the, the uh, plane flew today. Um, but a lot of the times what I do is I come in here, I go up to route, I click find, optimize route, and I just do minimum cost. And it gives me a more direct route. If you look at flight aware here, they were trying to avoid a lot of storms. They came this way. If you look at the route I created, it would have taken them right through the storms. So that's probably not the best way to go about it. But we're going to do this because we're flying tomorrow. There might not be storms. I don't know. And then the last thing that you have to do is generate alternatives. What I do is the easiest way. You can type in your alternatives if you know airports. But I come up here to alter alternates, find, and quick find. And we're done. We've got all our alternates. We've got our route. We've got our fuel, our payload, our aircraft, our flight. Only thing left now is to do compute flight. But wait, there's one thing that is optional. If you, along with PFPX, have purchased, um, I believe it is Topper. No, it's Topcat. Topper's something different. Ignore that. Topcat. You can come up here, go to performance, click takeoff. We have to select a performance module since we created a new plane. So we're going to click yes, and then we're going to let it spin. All right, then we come in here, 737, 800. That is our performance module. Save. Save aircraft. Now let's come back and do it again. Take off. Um, we didn't manually select runways, but we're just going to assume that we were given correct runways. Um, so takeoff weight, maximum allowable weight. You can change your flaps configuration manually or you can set optimum. Same with thrust configuration. 
Tell it whether or not you want the air conditioning on or off, any ice on or off. Put in the wind directions, the temperature, the pressure. That's another thing. This is all getting pulled directly from Active Sky. So if you have Active Sky installed, or running rather, uh, while you're in PFPX, it'll actually pull real world weather into PFPX as long as you have it selected down here. If you look in the bottom right hand corner of the screen where my mouse is, you'll see it says Weather Active Sky. So it's currently pulling. We make sure we have our, the correct runway condition. We can even shorten the beginning or shorten the ending of the runway. We're going to click Calculate and it'll calculate the takeoff conditions for us here, which is pretty sweet. So we have our takeoff performance. We can do the same thing with landing. Uh, landing's harder because it changes, so f but we changes mid-flight, really. Um, gonna do flaps 30, auto land, sure, let's do it that way, and apply. So now that we've done that, we're gonna hit compute flight. Now. If you did your performance calculations before hitting compute flight, you can still do them after, but if you did it before, it's gonna make you update the performance data just to make sure it's the most accurate. So you click update performance data, and now it generates your flight plan. Now what you can do here is you can go in and click release flight, and your flight is released. You're good to go. Now there's two more things that I personally like to do. I like to go up here and click print flight plan and I just print it to a PDF and I save it somewhere. And then you can also export it. So if you set up your um, if you set up your paths, so if you set it to the P3D folder, then you can come in, you can find the NGX, PMDG, just double click it, and well shoot. I know why I did this, so I'm gonna save you guys the hassle. When you start PFPX, you have to run it as administrator. Assuming you're writing to program files, like I am, and you're not on a separate hard drive. If you're writing to program files, you have to start PFPX as administrator to be able to export your NGX flight plans. So there's the NGX, and then somewhere in here, you can do it to VATSIM as well. And then if you set it up for the FS Labs, there's that too. Um, but then it'll have this route and then when you go into your PMDG 737 um, this right here KDFW KMCO 01 is what you will type in to the company root section in the um, MCDU on the 737 or the um, the FMC or whatever it's called on a Boeing plane right that's what you will type in because that will be the name of your route. Once you type that in and load it, then it'll actually load everything that you just made and export it to the plane. Or, yeah. So that's everything for PFPX. Other than not being able to export it because I didn't run PFPX as administrator. Um, by the way, if you close out of PFPX and reopen it, your flight will still be there. It deletes them after a day or so. Um, <clears throat> so, but your flight will still be there. Uh, so other than that, I'm done here. Now we are planned for our first leg of our world tour and you guys will get to see us fly that flight on Wednesday. So um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye now. Uh, this has been Blue Chip Sim with a uh, PFPX tutorial. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments what else you guys wanna see. I will have the uh, World Tour Wednesday coming out, uh, but then other than that, let me know what you wanna see. All right, thanks, bye-bye now.